All right, next up is North Carolina, and they are represented this afternoon by head coach Courtney Banghart and student athletes Deja Kelly and Alyssa Usby. Coach, if you would, please make an opening statement. Yeah, I mean, first off, just huge congratulations to um, South Carolina and their fan base. Um, they've really wrapped their arms around this program. Um, and obviously, a home court advantage is helpful, and they've earned it, and it, it played to their advantage. Um, they played really well on both ends of the ball. You know, I think they were eight for 10 in the first half from three. Um, and their primary, their primary all-stars are at the post position. So played really well defensively. They had a great game plan. You know, we, we don't have a lot of ball handling guards. You know, the last time we played them, um, we had three different ball handling guards in so that Deja could play off the ball some. Um, and now with our roster depletion, that wasn't what we could do. Um, so they did a good job really squeezing and shrinking the court from her. Um, you know, and, and clearly our guys had to go a lot of minutes. So you add fatigue to it. You know, I think you... What, they had 50 bench points or something. We had zero. Um, you know, so these guys are, are are gassed on top of it, and that showed itself in a lot of different ways with some turnovers and, and a lot of misses today. We didn't shoot the ball very well. So, um, you know, again, you know, this is a really good team. They've proven it all year. Um, you know, playing in Cordoza's last home game wasn't our wasn't our first choice, um, but hats off to them. They'll be a tough out for whoever they got uh, throughout the rest of their journey. Open it up for questions for just the student athletes at this time. Would please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. We'll start there in the third, third row. Introduce yourself, please, if you would. Um, I'm Caroline from the DTH. This is for Alyssa and Deja. What did you see from the South Carolina defense that was so disruptive for you guys today? Deja, would you take that first? Um, they were just, you know, they had a lot of intensity, a lot of energy. Um, they were making it, us catch it really high. They were, um, you know, they picked, started off picking up full court. Um, so, you know, they, they just brought the pressure on and, and they were, um, you know, I, I felt like I had two people on me at all times. Um, and yeah, I think, I think just their defensive intensity was really high from the jump and, um, you know, they got a lot of steals, a lot of runouts, um, which ultimately led to, led to, I think their 11-0 run to start. Alyssa? Yeah, similarly, they're just really competitive. They're active the full 40 minutes and they made everything for us pretty tough. Um, even on the offense and defensive glass, they were always crashing. And so there was always, um, they were just creating a lot of op more opportunities for themselves. Other questions? Let's go here to Pete and then around the room to the other side. For Deja and Alyssa, um, you know, today wasn't what you wanted, but it, I mean, how do you reflect on the season as a whole? Another 20 win season for you guys. and. Did you see progress in what you are trying to attempt? Alyssa, would you take that first, please? Yeah, I definitely saw progress throughout the season. Um, I felt like this group was very resilient. We faced a lot, of, a lot of adversity, whether that was in live play inside the lines or that was off the court with some of our teammates getting injured. This season required a lot of people to step up and to fill different shoes that maybe they might not have wanted to fill, but it's what this team required for them. So it, re it demanded the best out of each and every one of us. Deja? Yeah, I think for me, my view is probably the opposite. Um, this is one of our toughest years. Um, you know, it re required a lot of uh, pick me up from you know us vets, and um, obviously the injuries hit us hard. But um, you know, it happens to every team. Um, but you know, I think there were there were some moments, some strides throughout the season where you saw you know a lot of resiliency and. Um, but there were moments where there wasn't. So I think it was a lot of up and down. Um, you know, just a lot of uh, probably it took a toll, a toll on everyone mentally, uh, mentally a lot. But um, yeah, this was probably one of our toughest years for sure. Let's go here in the front. Yeah, Mitch North from North Carolina Public Radio. Um, for Alyssa and Deja, you know, Bot has been talked about your class and how you guys have sort of helped restore sort of the Carolina brand. Um, as you reflect on that after this game, like, how would you characterize what your class has accomplished for this program? Deja? Um, I don't think there's, you know, a good amount of words that, that can describe, you know, what we've what we've done for this program and, um, you know, how we've we've built it up to, to where it is now. Um, I can just say I'm, I'm really grateful to, to have been a part of it um, in these past four years and, um, you know, whatever the future holds. But I, I think just for us, you know, and to, to Alyssa, Z, and Anya, um, you know, for, for us to, you know, go through all of those ups and downs, all of the adversity together and to still, you know, build the North Carolina brand and North Carolina program back up, um, I think was, you know, it, it took a lot of, it took a lot of toughness. It took a lot of 
heart um, and for us to stay the course like we did and um, again continue to, to give our all to this program to make sure that you know now that it has our names on it that, that we wanted to make sure it hold it to a high standard um, I think we did just that. Alyssa? Yeah I felt like our group our senior group laid a great foundation for this program and we still have a long ways to go and everybody in that locker room feels it and knows it that we have higher expectations for ourselves but we make sure that we recognize the journey that we've been on and we're grateful for all the tough teams that we faced, all the diversity and up and downs because ultimately it takes a lot of individuals who are willing to put aside their own personal goals or their egos in order to sacrifice for the team and what the team needs. And today I felt like South Carolina was just a better team, but um, this group has a lot of potential and so does this program. I'll go to the middle. Um, Emma Moon with the Daily Tar Heel. For Alyssa, um, what pieces or differences did you see from South Carolina's bench in this matchup compared to um, your earlier matchup in November? Yeah, I felt like their girls this time around coming off the bench were ready to go and they were ready to compete. So they came off firing. They were not shy to take opportunities that they had, whether it was drives, getting rebounds, pushing the ball up the floor. So a lot of credit to their team as a whole, but especially those bench players who came in and made a positive impact. Go ahead. Uh, for Alyssa, how did you kind of see physicality impacting today's game, and how did that kind of limit you? I wouldn't necessarily say that the physicality limited me because I felt like I had plenty of great shots, and they just didn't go in. Obviously, that falls on me because I need to make sure I can knock those shots down. But I felt like I had plenty of great looks. My teammates are great because they do so many things, and I felt like they made my job easier because the ball moved as best as it could. Obviously, it didn't move well the entire game, but I felt like there were moments when I had great wide-open looks, and those just didn't knock down, and sometimes that's how it goes. But my competitive energy, I'm going to get back to it and make sure this result doesn't happen again in whatever shape or form or fashion. Any other questions for the student-athletes from the board? If not, we do have one via Zoom, Brad Lake. Yes, hi, ladies. It's Bradley from WNBA Swish. As the veteran leaders of the group, what have you told all the players as far as about the resiliency and how you all just made it to the tourney and what was like so special about being the veteran leaders? Oh, yeah, Alyssa. Um, Brad, could you repeat that a little bit? You broke up just a little bit on us. Just ladies, I'm sorry. As veteran leaders of the group, what have you told your group as far as your experience giving it to them and how far the team came out long? Melissa, got that? Go for it. Yeah, I think as veteran leaders on the team, we have to lead. That's one thing that this team requires, and so um, I felt like we did the best job we could as prepping our girls who haven't played in an NCAA tournament um, or maybe in front of this many fans or in this type of environment. So um, with that experience, Deja and I and the other seniors are uh, grateful to have those past opportunities because I felt like we were um, as prepped for this game as possible. Deja? Yeah, I think, um, you know, us having experience, obviously, in the tournament, this is our, our fourth appearance. Um, so being able to kind of um, carry that over to, to the younger ones um, and even the, the newbies, um, just the best way that way that we could, um, you know, because this was some people's first time being in this in this position, having this opportunity. Um, but obviously, we our goal wasn't just to make the tournament; it was to try to go as far as we can. Um, so you know, just us trying to continue to push everybody and, and push ourselves up to the best of our ability to continue to, um, you know, make a run. Um, obviously, we came up short, but I think, you know, the, the whole goal throughout the season was to continue to try to lead because um, that was our job. All right. Thank you, ladies. Pretty Thank, good. You. Thank you. And we'll open up for questions for Coach Banghart at this point. Uh, we'll take the first one over here on the left. Mario Bunn, Tar Heel Tribune. Mm -hmm. Obviously, every opponent tries to be physical on Deja. It seemed like there was more physicality against her today and more contact was allowed. I mean, can you talk about 
their approach to Deja today? Yeah, I mean, as I said, we had, you know, we've got four point guards on this roster, of which Deja's one of them, uh, and three of them are out. So she's the only one. So what, you know, I mean, you'll have to ask Don, but what it appeared to me the game plan was is to take the ball out of her hands. You know, they had enough depth to, to see how the game's being played, and, and you can take one here and there and, and, and sub, um, and those weren't, those weren't called. So then should they get to play through that more and more. But, you know, at the point of ball screens, at the point of non-ball screens, I think they were – you can play a little more aggressively when you got someone that can go in for you, right? Um, and so they, I think they tried to make a secondary ball handler um, out of our team, and, and they did that. So we had to put the ball in other people's hands. Who, that's just not that's not their skill set yet. That's not what they're how they see the game. Um, and so that really that really shrunk the court for us. Let's go to the fourth row there. Uh, Jeremiah Holloway with Inside Carolina. Courtney, obviously the first game in Chapel Hill was several months ago now, but uh, in that game they only had. You know, 65 kind of took them a while to get into rhythm. Uh, today, they were, you know, kind of able to make several runs. What do you think, from your perspective, what do you think kind of changed from a, a defensive standpoint that allowed them to kind of go on those runs and, and, you know, get in rhythm the way that they were able to? Yeah. Well, first off, they're at home. You know, I think uh, it's really great. The growth of our game makes these home games matter. You know, I've been in the game a long time, and over, over in the last few years, it does home, home court advantage feel as much as it does now. Uh, so that's the first thing, right? And, and, and we knew that them playing at home is a totally different um, thing. And then also, you know, to play these guys, they're so physical and so big, and they've got so much, um, they've got so much at every spot. It takes an enormous amount of energy, right? And so we played 11 guys the last time we played them, right? We played basically six this time. So over time, you know, you have to decide, all right, am I going to take away their interior game with activity, or am I going to play 1v1 there, um, you know? And... And they made they made big shots that they didn't make as much in the first game, um, and we weren't able to extend the court as much. You know, um, we kind of had to pick our battles a little bit. Um, so it, you know, that that skeleton that skeleton of our crew is a, didn't can't play kind of at the same pace defensively that we that we wanted to play at. Let's go in the front here to Pete. Courtney, obviously not the way you wanted it to end, but do you feel like? Steps were forward. Steps were made. Progress was made in building your program for the long run. Um, you know, every year is so unique. I think we've really built um, a, a pride in the program again, um, and as a fan base is really electric. Um, we've had a lot of great wins in that way. Um, you know, I think. What's hard is, though, is that you also want to be able to develop your younger guys and all that. And again, we just didn't have them. They're not playing right now, right? So, you know, I think that looking forward to the offseason, getting to work with these guys a little bit more because they're close uh, to being healthy and a couple of them are practicing. They're just not playing in games. Um, so, you know, but to make a tournament we know is really difficult. I think uh, beating a good Michigan State team with, again, this crowd we've been playing with for six weeks, you know, I think I grew a lot as a coach because we didn't have as much. Um, I like to play kind of read and react and teach our guys how to play um, with one another. And so with some limited skill sets in certain spots, we had to be more of a, of a controlled, um, controlled action. So I really had to try to get them certain spots on the floor uh, kind of throughout the game. So that's not really how I have built our success. So that was kind of a good, good thing for me to have to do um, and stretch there. But, you know, um, I think in the grand scheme of things, it's hard after a loss to say, are you where you need to be? Um, but if you told me with, if you had showed me the group I was going to be in with, um, you know, for the whole six weeks, um, they've done a lot of really, really good things. You know, around a 32 with this group and, and how committed they are to um, how they leaned in. You know, like I told them that in the locker room, it's so easy when things go hard to kind of put one foot in, one foot out. And then it shows, well, I don't really care, so it's okay if it doesn't work out. Um, and these guys, it meant a lot to them, and they said it, and they felt it, and they, you know, and as things got more messy in the roster, they just, they stayed caring, and they stayed leaned in. And um, good things come from people that are, are built like that. So I think in the, in the grand scheme of things, yes. Um, I'll probably need a little bit more time to, to answer that more thoughtfully. Let's swing over to the other side of the room. Uh, Courtney, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know who's coming back, who's staying, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, your first recruiting class here at Carolina, yeah. um, some of them might have just played their last game in a mm -hmm. Carolina uniform. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but if they did, if they didn't, whatever, how do you – what was their impact mm -hmm. on this program um, and on you? Wow. You know, I told them that in the locker room that I wasn't ready to address that in that moment, right? Because how do you, ca how do you categorize people that believed in you before you'd done it? 
right? And, um, and that's kind of what us coaches do all the time. We believe in kids before they've done it. Um, but when you take over a new program, you're asking them to do that the other way around, right? Um, and that's not the common walk, right? And then with someone, you know, of Deja's stature who, who um, knew that she it was going to, she knew this would not be just like this. She knew it was going to come with something, right? Um, and, you know, and then you look at the other three that have stuck by it and with it and improved. And, you know, Alyssa's relentlessness is to be, to have gotten her to be a great athlete and to becoming a really good basketball player, you know, there's real growth in that. Um, so I'm not sure I'm able yet, and I told them that, because how do you, the emotion of preparing your team to win takes kind of all you got. And then how to navigate takes another, the, only whatever you have left. Um, and to honor them in the way they deserve to be honored takes kind of a fresh mind. Um, but I think right off the cuff, it's that they, they believed in me before I had done it. Um, and we went to four straight NCAA tournaments, and they've um, they've made it a hard ticket to get, um, and they've shown that um, that they this is a special place to play basketball, right? Um, they've kind of brought that back. So um, I don't know if we'll ever be ready to kind of talk about their their impact, but sometimes you don't have to if um, if the program continues to move forward. You know that you were there when, and that's why I think what they'll be most remembered for. A question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Middle there. Um, just, I guess, with the limited bench um, in the last, what did the last twenty four hours look for you in terms of preparing for the depth that South Carolina had in, you know, combating UNC's fatigue? You know, a lot of body work through mobility and mas massage and recovery, um, a lot of walkthrough, um, a lot of film, to, which is kind of what this group has had to do. They've had to kind of learn by watching film and less by actually doing it. And that's hard because not everybody learns that way. We all learn differently. Um, but, you know, we, from a sport performance perspective, we've got to save all that we've got for game day, uh, mentally and physically. So um, we didn't overwhelm them, um, in either physically or mentally, because we knew we were going to need it on game day. Um, we knew that our margin was going to be really small, especially at, at South Carolina. Um, and so, um, yeah, I would, I would say it was mostly body recovery um, and lighter load so that we could have as much in the tank uh, coming into today. Chapel, to your left. Hey, Courtney. Hey. Um, Dawn was in here earlier talking about the balance between when you're up by a lot, especially in the second half, wanting to stay engaged and keep your foot on the pedal, but also not necessarily run up a score. I'm just wondering from mm -hmm. your perspective on the coach, the other side of a pretty lopsided result, do you feel like South Carolina mm -hmm. struck that balance well? Do you feel like kind of what she said there was what played out in the second half? I have, I have, I'm not smart enough or getting paid enough to worry about what her team's doing. <laughs> I've got to work on my team. So what I was doing is what we've, I hope they play to the personality of his leaders and that is they just never stop, right? So. I, I don't know what, what her intention was. Um, she's here to try to win a national championship, so are we. Um, and this is high level division one basketball. We, feelings don't matter, right? They just don't. They, what happens inside the lines is, is what has to happen. Like, so, so I don't know, I, I would trust whatever Dawn said she was trying to do. I would trust that she was trying to do that. Dick. What were your thoughts on the environment today and for women's basketball awesome. in general? I've seen several of the NBA legends say they know more names of the female players and teams than they do for the men now. For real. I mean, we always do a kind of March Madness, don't worry, no money involved um, on the tournament. And we didn't even fill out a men's bracket. We're like, all right, whatevs, Carolina to the end, right? But outside of that, I wouldn't know. I've watched so much more, less men's basketball this year than I have in my whole life. Um, and I think that will only continue um, because now um, if I'm not scouting, I'm watching just the, the game I want to watch is typically a women's game given the level. Um, and also just the fan bases. I mean, you're watching, um, this is a hard ticket to get. Our game was sold out against them and obviously the home game matters now. Um, so I feel really prideful. Um, it certainly wasn't my work that done it has done it, but um, I'm certainly prideful to be a part of this game at the right time. Um, I feel like I, it almost it validates how much you put into this that your players get to be a part of a movement at the right time, right? And so their job now, this generation of players, is to not only um, contain and continue, but uh, it's to enhance. Um, and these fan bases and these environments and these resources are doing that at both at both institutions. Let's go in the front here. Yep. Last offseason, you had players transfer out and some transfer in. Mm -hmm. Do you anticipate that kind of transition? And what are the roster management challenges with at least three, at least two freshmen coming in, and then the four seniors have the fifth year of eligibility mm -hmm. out there? 
Yeah, I mean, roster management is the new thing, right? And I said this at my pre-press conference, that the game has changed. And if you don't like it, you should get out, because it's the only other way to do it, right? Um, you know, these kids have an annual decision to make. Um, and is that a bad thing? Maybe not, right? That's kind of, I have an annual decision to make, right? I, you know, we don't, no one's held hostage to where they're located anymore. Um, and so I think for, uh, in terms of roster management, you don't, you really don't, I've not asked our seniors. It, it, it's sort of irrelevant until the season's over. I mean, every season has its own unique um, group. Um, and so, you know, the roster management is absolutely a part of it. And the portal works both ways, as I've been a, a beneficiary of. Um, so we're, we're, that, that's the, those are the kind of conversations that will happen over the next couple of weeks. Okay. And, again, I'm not smart enough to focus on anything besides beating South Carolina. And that will shift focus now to the next stuff for our program. Take two more, Jeremiah, and then. Yeah, Courtney, um, obviously when Deja was in here, she was saying that, you know, this year more than probably other years had been, you know, a longer, you know, tougher year. Obviously, those are her words and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But did you kind of sense that from her throughout the course of the year that maybe this one was, you know, kind of a lot on her, maybe more than, you know, the other the other years that you had been coaching? Mm -hmm. Well, she had more running mates, right? I think, again, we had, I mean, how, how many, I don't even know how many we have in a uniform, nine? I don't even know. We have zero scholarship guards off the bench, zero and you're trying to play in an NCAA tournament game against an undefeated team on the road. Like, it's not a great equation for success, right? And so where she might want three minutes every quarter to rest, where she used to have that, she doesn't have that right now, right? And so you're doing things, there's a little bit more focus on you and you're fatigued, right? Um, and so I think what made it harder, some lessons are good and some resiliency is good, but so too is, um, is an opportunity to have your 12 against their 12, or their, your 14 against their 14. I don't know how many they played tonight, 12 or something. But, you know, we've got – we had seven – uh, five guys play over 27 minutes. They had zero. It's a lot of minutes to play in an environment like this. So I think what made it hard was is that, you know, you had Kayla run the one the last time we played them, and then Renaya would sub in for her, and then Paulina also played some at the one. And those kids are not here. So it just – there's not there's not a lot of movement or wiggle room or rest or recovery or, or – or uh, process and and get to step off, step away and watch, you know. Um, so yeah, I think that that again, everyone deals with injuries. I'm not sure you deal with five at the same position. You know, that was a really unique challenge for this group this year. So I think that's what made it hard for her is because she was kind of the only one left, and that's she, her. She's best when she can be a combo. She can play the two, the one, and we can kind of hide her in various spots. Um, and that wasn't a possibility this year. Last as question. the year went on. Coach, kind of looking at the beginning of this game. What did you kind of see happening on the floor that made it so difficult for you guys to find some rhythm? Yeah, I mean, they took great advantage of their crowd. You know, your basket looks better. It's the, game, it's the practice, the gym you practice in. A lot of times you've played a lot in, um, so you're a little bit less gun shy. And that's true kind of across all these kind of top 30 teams. When you look at their home scores, how many they average at home versus how many they average on the road, um, it's a big difference, right? And so um, this is where they're comfortable. Um, and, you know, eight for 10 from three at any level will win you that half. Right, um, so they shot lights out. Um, they didn't need to do a lot in the post. Uh, Maria did a good job handling Cardoza, um, but you know you'd get into their ball screen, and if you when you negate the ball screen, they're able to hit an open guy, and they would make that shot. Whereas we were three for 18, you know. So it's kind of the perfect storm of of they shot way above their average, um, and we shot below our average. Um, so mathematically, that's never going to go so well for you. All right, thank you, Coach. You got Appreciate it. Thanks. You got it. Of course.